Once you imported the airflow profile, there are several ways to make a 3D propeller. I will show you how to make one using the loft feature and some guide curves. First, we need to create a smaller copy of the airfoil for the tip. Hold Ctrl down and click and drag the front plane to create a plane 2 inches in front of it. Start a sketch on this plane and use Convert Entities to copy the airfoil. Then go to Tools, Sketch Tools, Scale and select the curve. Click on the Scale About box and select the leftmost point, then make the tip 0.6 of the original size. We need to rotate the tip a little so that it has a positive angle of attack. Go to Tools, Sketch Tools, Rotate. Click the spline and the leftmost point and enter negative 10 degrees. The blade is twisted so we need the root profile to be rotated as well. We cannot rotate the curve directly since it is defined by the coordinates we imported. Instead, we will create a new sketch on the front plane. Use Convert Entities to copy the profile and repeat the rotate process with negative 25 degrees. Exit the sketch and right-click on the initial curve to hide it. To create guide curves, start a 3D sketch and add one point to the left of each spline. The first one will be set at the origin, but for the second one, click Fix to keep its position constant. Then click on the spline tool and click on the two points. Right-click Select. Go to top view and click on the spline to see the handles. Adjust their direction and length until you obtain the desired curves. This side, also called the leading edge, should be pretty smooth. Now look at it from the side to make sure it is on a horizontal plane and doesn't curve up and down. Use the spline tool again to connect the other side or the trailing edge. Then go to top view. As you can see, the blade looks rather short, so I decided to edit the tip plane and make it 2.5 inches away. This creates an error because this point cannot be both fixed in its place and coincident with a tip that was moved farther. To fix this, edit the sketch, click on the point and delete the fixed relation. Then fix it again at its new position. To make sure the top surface of the blade is rather continuous, we need to adjust the handles from a view different than the top view. Go to front view and press Alt and the right arrow a couple of times, so that the right side of the tip is almost horizontal. Then adjust the handle so that the spline continues the top line of the profiles. Next, press the down arrow 6 times and adjust the handles again, making sure that the width of the blade is larger towards the root than the tip. When it looks right, exit the sketch. Next, click on the loft feature and select the two airfoil profiles. Then click in the guide curves box and select the two splines. Click OK to create your blade. The NACA airfoil is not preserved perfectly throughout the length of the blade, but it is accurate enough. If you want to increase the accuracy, you need to make more copies of the airfoil between the root and the tip, scale them to fit between the two splines, and use them as intermediate profiles in the loft. Next, we have to create the hub. Sketch a circle on the top plane, then use Extrude Boss. Now click on the circular pattern, select the loft as the feature to pattern, and the cylinder as the direction. Make three instances and click OK. If you want, you can go to Insert Features Dome and make the hub rounded. You can also add fillets between the blades and the hub to make it look nicer. In the next video, I will show you how to use SOLIDWORKS to make engineering drawings of components and really cool exploded views of assemblies.